Developing right now, MacArthur High School in Hollywood is on lockdown after more than a dozen students and a teacher are infected with some sort of rash. Any minute they're going to be transporting some kids to the hospital. Now what we understand is uh, this all happened just a couple of hours ago at the school. Uh, kids began itching, they had redness on their skin, and that's when they called 911. So at this point, the rest of the students, we understand uh, many of the students have been taken into the gym in school. They're not allowing any other student to leave the school right now, not allowing any parents in. A number of parents are showing up because they got concerned when they saw the fire trucks and the police activity. Uh, not much information is coming out of the school. Uh, some parents are frustrated. Uh, we just talked to one parent. This is an unconfirmed report that perhaps it was some type of bug or mite that was biting the students. But again, that is unconfirmed. This just happened Wednesday, May 16th, 2012, that these students and teachers have gotten sick in Hollywood, Florida, and they're all being rushed to the hospitals. You can see here this little A marker. That's MacArthur High School. Directly parallel to that, by the shore, is this B marker. That's the incident from two days prior, where some kind of weird drum or barrel washed up on shore with some type of chemical in it that was boiling and it was about to catch fire. Day. The cause, a dangerous discovery, a drum filled with a toxic chemical washing ashore on the intercoastal. That is Mike Mars alive for us in Hollywood to bring us this story, Mike. Guys, what a headache, but the good news here is that it is finally over. A1A back open, that barrel, that drum of chemicals, it's out of here. The bad stuff gone. Blame this 55-gallon drum that washed up on Hollywood Beach. Inside, some unknown chemical. The immediate area evacuated. Traffic shut down. The solution began to bubble, nearly boiling into a fire. So hazmat officials neutralized the chemical in a solution. That means they made it safe to move. Hazmat units escorted it to a waste management facility in Davie late Monday. Guys in protective suits came back out to the scene to clean up the mess. The road is back open. Now, I'm not surprised, but I am a little annoyed that the news channel did not bother mentioning the similar incident that happened. And right parallel next to each other is too weird of an incident to be happening so close to one another. So, I don't know. This kind of stuff just disturbs me. It might be nothing. Maybe I'm crazy. But once again, mainstream media fails to do any type of real reporting. At the very least, it deserves to be mentioned that these two incidents happened within two days of each other. And why would there be a barrel full of some type of chemical that's boiling, just hanging around, you know? What the hell was it? Are they going to tell us? Are they going to follow up on it? Probably not. They sure as hell aren't going to suggest that that might be what made people sick right down the street. I'm just so disgusted with the mainstream media. But nothing's new there. Because at the very least, it's odd enough to be mentioned. Alright, well thanks for watching. Much love. Bye. Story out front tonight, drugs known as bath salts being blamed for a gruesome scene in Miami. This is a naked man. He was shot dead on Saturday by police because he was gnawing off another man's face. Obviously, that sounds horrific, and it is. I want to warn you that the pictures uh, we're about to show you are very disturbing. 31-year-old Rudy Eugene was described to be in a zombie-like state when he was caught by police. Armando Aguilar, president of the Miami Fraternal Order of Police, suspects Eugene was under the influence of so-called bath salts, which are sold as cocaine substitutes or synthetic LSD. When, when he was found, what he had done to this man's face, uh, victim was 65 years old, truly horrific. Apparently all that's left is his goatee. Uh, his eyeballs were gone. His face, it is, it is unbelievable. Dr. Charles Sophie is a psychiatrist at the Los Angeles County Department of Children and Family Services, and he's out front now. Dr. Sophie, have you ever heard of anything like this? I mean, it's awful to even talk about um, some of the, 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 the things I just said that, that this man did to his victim's face. 
Absolutely. There are many reactions that your brain can have when you're putting in a substance such as this. These are very cocaine-like substances that will have a very aggressive reaction within your brain. And the behavior that comes out of that could be anything from aggression to ripping off basically someone's face. Severe, severe reactions. And they're not able to be tested, these drugs. So we're putting in substances into our face, that we, into our bodies, that we don't know what is going to happen when we do that. So when, when we use the name bath salts, which I guess is the street name, um, you, you said a little bit cocaine like I mean what 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 would be in it I mean does it vary every single concoction or what what's really in quote-unquote bath salts and so we don't really know what's in them we just see the kinds of reactions and can kind of guess what chemicals in the brain they're reacting with and it, it, my understanding is that the the Eugene had been at some sort of a music festival. The police there had said that these bath salts were sort of something people were doing. Um, is this something that's spreading that you're hearing more and more about? I mean, I'm just thinking back to the days when, you know, meth and meth heads was just sort of an occasional story you heard coming out of the Midwest and then all of a sudden became a national crisis. Absolutely. Over the past year, we've heard more and more, and I've had more and more patients with this type of issue. So they're out there. I think there's going to be a ban, if there isn't already, in the availability of them until the studies can be done and tests can be developed. But yes, we're hearing more about it. And where, where, where do people usually get them, the drug? I think most of, the, most of the time they are sold at head shops under various names, but they're available over the counter until I think most recently. and the uh, bottom right there, penultimate bottom right, is in fact a real individual. Uh, I leave you with that perspective. And all of it is, of course, underpinned by technologies, automation, miniaturization loom large, connectivity in the bottom line, our lives increasingly recordable as a digital anthropology, cognitive intelligence, and whether you live in the same reign as Ray Kurzweil, who would argue that the singularity is near, namely machi the machines will have the same capable, remarkable capabilities we're possessed with. And I don't offer any discriminatory position with regard to the three national flags I've put up there, but the Chinese are undoubtedly actively at work in all aspects of both passive usurpment of our technology as well as active exfiltration. And, of course, even though I'm a U.S. citizen and privileged to be so, having been in this great nation for 35 years, any time I can stick it to the French, I enjoy doing that. That's why, that's why their flag is there. So, quick, quick primer on biological design. This is what we are. It starts with our genes. This remarkable thing called the genome that programs the 326 different cell types in our body that form 37 organs that work remarkably in most of us with remarkable fidelity over a lifetime of 80 years. But those genes encode the next thing, which is called proteins. Those proteins essentially build a, essentially the circuit diagrams of each of those cell types in the body and so forth. So it's how do you understand how that primary digital code in the genome builds a human being or a mouse or any life form on the planet because it's all the same code and it's interchangeable. That started in the 1980s, the ability to move a gene from one species into another. So that of course leads to engineering life or engineering bio, uh, bio forms. Uh, one of our esteemed uh, uh, authors here, Joel Garrow and others have written a number of texts on the whole question of human enhancement in its various radical forms from mere enhancement to overt augmentation to heritable 
transmissible traits, namely that trait is embedded in sperm or eggs and then transmitted to the next generation. So if you take the embryonic stem cell or you could even add adult stem cells, how do you, uh, uh, tissue engineering, how do you take that cell, which when a sperm and an egg fuse to create that initial cell that's capable of giving rise to a whole human or a whole animal, what are the, what's the genetic program which is in that that then builds this remarkable repertoire of cells in our body and very bright smart people are now beginning to work with that technology to build something like that which is a, a transplantable bladder for people who have bladder cancer you can take some of their own cells and grow it and reconstruct a bladder a graft is something grown from another species in this case a pig uh, that is then non-immunogenic can be a universal donor to be put into people and a distant future is the future organ farmers of America. But human performance optimization is a subject of quite legitimate issue of, of inquiry and the military has spent a great deal of time on this and this is just one of their final reports. But basically it is looking at the level of extreme performance today, the special forces, if you, uh, but it's not limited to that. The uh, Sydney Sea Eagles, uh, uh, the, that's the Australian equivalent of the NFL, now genetically profile all their first round draft choices for particular genes. And the one gene that turns out to have the best advantage is something that enables you to pump lactic acid out of your aching muscles more quickly than someone who will get leg cramps. So they automatically profile in that way. So these are the sorts of parameters but I'd like to, I, I believe that the first impact in not just augmenting the warfighter, but augmenting human beings will be in the realm of novel materials. The question of super flask flexible uh, electronics. The next step uh, for, the I, for the iPad and the Kindle will clearly be carried portably and so forth. But it's non-reflected, camouflageable materials. The next one over metamaterials is the first generation Harry Potter invisible cloak. Namely, there's a person standing in front of those file cabinets. If, if you've got some Escher-like uh, illusion there, but that man is actually cloaked with a material that bends the light around him. Uh, so you've still got a fuzzy image, but you can see that the next generation may very well move to Harry Potterville in terms of its ability. And then this remarkable creature called the octopus and its ability to switch colors uh, instantly. What are the underlying frameworks that could permit you to create a so-called biomimetic material, something that mimics what nature does remarkably? We saw a satellite image zoom out and identify the town as Ogden Marsh Township. Population 1200. Population 1200. Then we have this shot. Two chemtrail jets flying across the sky, laying heavy chemtrails. We are the fucking boat. And you're not gonna shoot me? Travis? Yeah? Kill the engine. There's a big plane, Russ. Why's that? Because we're right on top of it. What? What's on? That goddamn plane. Trixie. Rebdo Verde prototype. It was ready to an incinerator in oh, Texas. You're telling me that you guys engineered this crap? It's designed to destabilize a population. Finally, this is how the film ends.